So, Tess in the space-time continuum, am I right? How else do you explain this? I mean, personally, I don't bother. I'm already an elastic maniac with some kind of facial disorder who was once kidnapped by an interdimensional kiwi and visited the subspace in between realities. I've been eating gravitational anomalies for breakfast the past couple of days. You think a little quantum displacement scares me? Nah, no, it's just incredibly annoying. Yeah, laugh it up. I don't see you attempting to fix up a roughed up slab of plywood with tools that dematerialize at will. Yeah, I can feel myself destabilizing at the molecular level. I should probably do something about that. And hey, on any other day, I'll be pissing my pants at the chance to run down the block and get this shit repaired, if not for the fact that I'm flat broke. You make one video on processed oil and it runs you so dry your atomic restabilizer guy won't ring you up, huh? So I mean, hey, wouldn't it just be perfect timing if I currently had a couple brand spanking new hats and beanies on the Gomotion store page right now? As we speak, crowdmate.com slash collection slash Gomotion, store link source in the description. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, this thing ain't gonna fix itself. Still though, I've got nothing else on the agenda for the next 10 minutes. Might as well get a tad more mileage out of this Swiss cheese looking ass background before I perform surgery. To be totally pissed myself though, I don't really know of another topic I haven't already covered that'd only last me that long. Luckily, I did buy a generator a while back. This specifically delivers pre-written episode ideas whenever I deliver physical abuse to it. The 10 minutes for that, get out of here. 10 minutes for that? I'm writing a video script, not a second Bible. Finally, language I can spit at! Significant cancelled FNAF fan games. I am really feeling a three-worded title today. FNAF fan games, they exist, trust me. And hey, if I know my fair share of anything regarding totally useless info, it's my ability to recall a weirdly specific amount of these things that never quite made the cut. Cancel FNAF fan games and matter spawning into our plane of existence, two things that shouldn't exist according to the laws of physics. I am sensing a theme here. Picture this, you're a FNAF fan, you wanna make a game, and with FNAF's core gameplay appeal being the simplicity in its design, well then I guess the only logical option is to start taking notes. And hey, if you're one out of a hundred people, can Congratulations, you're on your way to releasing another test vial into the gurgling, festering bowels of GameJolt.com to be judged for all eternity. And if you're anybody else, hey, welcome to the club. These things are usually never anything more than passion projects built by people driven by the pure art in game development, and of course, love for the source material. And sometimes the joy in making piss and shit jokes, each of their own. Uh, but let's face it, the majority of these things do get scrapped at one point or another. After all, anybody can plan a fan game, but without the right programming knowledge, knowing how to create the right assets for the thing, or if your heart just simply ain't in the right place, there's no guarantee it'll ever fall into anybody's hands but yours. Lack of motivation is definitely the strongest factor at play here, he thinks, whether simply gathering the right team is a challenge, or if you've planned for something a little over ambitious. I mean, hell, game development on its own is a difficult ass venture for most people if you're not fully prepared for it, let alone a likely an experienced fan trying to develop an original feeling fan tribute. So hey, instead of celebrating and documenting the shit that does manage to fling itself into our atmosphere, yeah, tonight we're tucking into dinner scraps. And look what's on the menu. One week of Flimsies, the cancelled third entry in what would have been the One Night of Flimsies trilogy. Oh wait, yeah. This thing is probably the most infamous scrap to FNAF fan project to date. After all, the first two Flumpties games were some highly praised junk, so a third on the horizon definitely caught eyes. The game would have absolutely sodding defenestrated the good old one night formula of the previous titles in favor of a full weekend nights, introducing a different enemy with different behaviors for each. Development was well underway for OF2, a couple teasers here and there, practically all the game's assets in the first night were all but finalized and implemented, yeah, it was canceled less than two months after its announcement. In all fairness, John Chrome, the dude behind Flumpties, initially never planned for a third Flumpties game prior to the announcement of weeks and that it was the encouragement of fans that led to the game's production. But after jumping into development with minimal ideas and subsequently realizing inherent problems in the less than well thought out gameplay, the game was ultimately canned, leaving the series to lay almost totally dormant until One Night of Flumpties 3. However, while the official bout was scrapped, the game's assets and a Night 1 demo were released upon its cancellation for anybody to take it upon themselves to revitalize the project, in turn spawning the ongoing development of the most popular fan continuation of One Week at Flumpties. Yeah, it's a fan fan game. How many layers of illegal is this? You want to see inspiration happen in about three seconds? <gasps> Guys! Project Box by Mediocre Mel. This thing is definitely one of the more interesting on the list, relying on both a really pretty looking pixel art style in the visuals department and turning the concepts introduced in the non canon FNAF novel trilogy into enemy mechanics. Concepts of which as a whole the game would use as a foundation. Uh, gameplay wise, this would have been your typical fan game romp at its core, but from the looks of things, would have had a much heavier emphasis on featuring elements of a more traditional point and click survival horror. Of course, including a good old boy howdy hide mechanic, an inventory system, and needing to actively traverse through your environment in order to survive. Honestly, the 
what it's worth, the level of polish this thing had looked pretty outstanding, even featuring full pixel art animation in some areas. The thing was ultimately scrapped three years into development, though everything that would have been was fully documented. Images, concepts, mechanics, assets, work in progress sketches, it's always cool as shit to see the extent of development on projects that never quite made it to the spotlight. Especially fully archiving a fan game concept as wacky and unique as this. Not only switching things up by basing it on the separate novel trilogy canon and sticking as faithful to it as it did, but sticking to a sick ass art style at that. And hey, speaking of wacky and unique, yeah, this is anything but that. Those Knights of Fred Bears reinvents the Five Nights at Freddy's title template ever so slightly and manages to just be the most average looking Fred Bear Free Roam out there. Fred Bear Free Roams, aka the subsection of fan games cluttering up the FNAF tag on GameJolt.com and are about as self explanatory, self explanatory gets. To be totally fair to Nixon, the creator of this thing, the first teaser was dropped in early August of 2015, well before that whole trend spun as out of control as it did. But while TNF did look promising over the three trailers released over the latter half of 2015, sure, it did look pretty, but Honestly, it looks fairly bare bones, all things considered. I do totally understand the initial hype behind it, though. Nixon was already an established content creator in the community, and would go on to produce entries in the fan favorite, the Joy of Creation fan game series. But yeah, I don't know, man. Those nights with Fred Bears looks like it would have been the epitome of run from Fred Bear in a closed off maze till he slips on the piss trickling down your pant leg. These games are like the junk food of Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. Yeah, <laughs> wow, look at this thing. It's the same shit we've been eating up for six years now. Whoops. But hey, credit where credit is due. Development was greenlit on an official remake of this game in 2018. Oh, was cancelled. I mean, sure, graphically and model-wise, things did have a tad bit of a stronger identity, but there's only so much you can do to spray paint a running simulator. If he screams at me that lack of motivation killed this thing, honestly, I wouldn't hesitate to say, Yeah, I agree! Sinister turmoil. Yeah, I don't know much about this one. This is one of the only big cancelled fan games I never really followed the progress of, more than likely in part due to, yeah, even 14 year old Gamersion wasn't convinced by the absolute epitome of the whole teeth equals scary ordeal, which other than a lack of eyes was literally the only design tweak made to any given pre-established FNAF animatronic that this game passed off as its running theme to tie each character's visual style together, with quotes around just about every word in that entire sentence. I mean, the whole deal with the animatronic prefix being sinister for this rodeo, honestly, I can't say I was expecting much else. <laughs> what is this meant to be scary? Holy shit, if that ain't sinister! Well, this game's designs were nothing to gawk at, though. Yeah, I wish I had enough intel to finish the sentence. Digging up info on this game's development as a whole to try and understand what the thing would have been is a game of total trial and error. I mean, hey, it probably don't help that the original game page for the thing was totally wiped from the face of its planet, but you know, just a hunch. Thanks to an unofficial game job page to host this garbage, though, I did manage to cop what I believe to be two public tech demos of the thing, released across its original development. First up's a quote-unquote story mode demo featuring 15 minutes of walk-in. To be totally fair to the dev here, Angus Games, as admittedly bare bones as this thing is, it feels weirdly well made for a Five Nights Freddy's fan game demo featuring a decaying Freddy Fazbear's and the Dental McGee 3 over here. I'll be damned if visually this thing wasn't at least partially inspired by Portal 2's opening environment, and as a self-proclaimed portal junkie, that definitely ain't a complaint. Surprisingly enough, just walking around this starting area, an overgrown, abandoned, familiar location, I don't know, it makes for a pretty neat little romp in total honesty. It's probably just the portal doing me talking, but hey, let me have this. Now hey, I'm praising a skeleton here, but for what it's worth, this genuinely does feel like the foundation for what could have turned out to be a super promising and super cool little tribute. And even for such a simple little demo, this thing's got that experienced indie dev polish scrawled all over it, graphically for sure, and even little moments like walking down this constricted walkway, totally begging for a tense moment to arise. It's subtle, but killer stuff to see in game design. Yeah, the other demo's a spring trap simulator where I managed to get myself out of bounds in 15 seconds. Again, totally, totally promising, and from what I understand, this was potentially a humans versus animatronic, dead by daylight sort of multiplayer sitch, which definitely could have been a whack ass time. I could definitely see myself having fun with the modes like that. But hey, with all that being said, while the full romp was ultimately cancelled, you know what they say, crawling around and pissing shit is the next best thing next to playing a FNAF fan game. Yeah, this ain't that, but it sure as hell slaps as a passable simulator. Sinister Turmoil Sewers. This is essentially a polished snippet of what would have been the full Sinister Turmoil experience, around 45 minutes in length. There's not much to this thing other than dashing around a sewer, I know, avoiding mangle, and solving puzzles in order to escape. Presumably. Yeah, never finished it, a mechanical cupcake ratted on me, sick frosted bastard! Well, with all that said, there is one final fan game I want to discuss. <laughs> one five, there's hardly a difference. Pop Goes, created by King Carter, is a fan game series that's been around the block since the days of FNAF 3, and not counting cancelled versions of fully released garbage, cancelled side content, or extras, then the total list of cancelled Pop Goes fan games includes Pop Goes Encore, Pop Goes 2 2016, Pop Goes 1 The Black Rabbit, Pop Goes 2 The Dead Forest, and finally, 
Popco's Finale, which in themselves already outweigh the number of released Popco's fan games, even if you don't want to count the momentarily canon fan fan game Popco Zero, which Zero included would bring the total number of cancelled shit to a goddamn six. The Black Rabbit and the Dead Forest were technically part of one hybrid project Popco's reprinted, respectively a Popco's remake and its sequel, but even counting the two projects as one, that's still a match for the four released Popco's games to date. Popco's Arcade, Popco's, Popco's Arcade 2, and Popco's Arcade 2020 Edition. There are also like three cancelled Popco's comics and a cancelled Silent Night DLC for the original Popco's. Yeah, weasels and game releases don't exactly go hand in hand. But even at that, that's not to say that all the canned Popco's material was inherently deeply flawed or uninteresting. In fact, the ideas and concepts introduced through any one of the scrapped bouts are, in my opinion, some of the coolest I've seen from the content creator community. Uh, like, take the absolutely battered, heartless animatronics from Popco's to the Dead Forest. The cast of 3D printed animatronic mascots you are up to toe to toe with are now quote unquote withered. Which sure, that alone isn't exactly a groundbreaking concept, but due to these animatronics now missing their respective heart module, a vital component to making sure the things, you know, function, the measures originally put into place and implemented into each animatronic to allow them to reprint their own replacement body parts in preparation for any potential damages, yeah, missing such a crucial organ maybe fucked up their ability to correctly uh, remember what their own body parts looked like a tad, resulting in these branching, twisting, and misshapen night black limbs, which is made extra cool by the fact that these limbs looking like dead trees was indeed intentional to carry the whole dead forest motif, which that concept alone has got to be just one of the most wicked things I've ever seen in a fan game. I'm a huge sucker for that kind of design. And honestly, the scrapped Popco's content over the years is some of the most well-preserved, documented, and archived I've seen from a fan game series, going as far as to straight up release game files, assets, 3D character models, entire OSTs, a piss ton of concept sketches and drawings, just about anything that was conjured up during the development of these games was ultimately spilled, including this stunning thing. Yeah, they can't all be winners. Though, while a lot of this content is scattered about, a good amount of behind the scenes stuff's been neatly compiled into a couple micro projects. Popco's Memories, essentially a glorified PowerPoint that did reveal some exclusive renders, art, and intel of each established character in the Popco's universe at the time, including the slew of the Dead Forest's animatronic mascot cast, Popco's 2 epitome packs containing models and references to help people create Dead Forest fan art, and hey, all this content and more is preserved on a game job page to archive Popco's as history. Yeah, it's called Popco's Archive, ho ass. <laughs> Clearly, King Carter isn't a stranger to kick in the bucket under these projects. Most recently, the cancelled Chef Wanted, a retro looking RPG totally disconnected from the Popco's IP. But while that thing did hit the fan, the experience developed from working on the fan game was set to be poured into efforts for future projects, such as the recently released Chase Animatronics, a simple Pac Man esque maze runner, playing as the guards to escape the Fazbear Gang trademark. Which now that I think about is a novel yet weirdly perfect mishmash of games, the first Freddy's game and Pac Man both being single player survival games orbiting around the central concept of keeping a group of four ghostly enemies away from you. This thing just looks like a genuinely neat little experience I definitely want to check out sometime. One glance at the title of this video and the fact that I'm talking about a game that actually released though, yeah, I feel like I'm committing a deadly sin. Tell me that's not a sign and I'm burning this thing behind me to a crisp. So hey, that was a considerable dive into the wacky world of Keanu FNAF fan projects and I should probably get this brush checked out, huh? Phasing in and out of existence wasn't exactly on the agenda and hey, I'd love to cancel plans and make room for this shit, but I have a particularly wacky feeling my particles destabilizing and uh, living don't exactly meet eye to eye, so hey, it's this, all risking certain death. I mean, if I'm not pissing and shitting and screaming at point and click survival horrors in front of an easily replaceable, perfectly pristine red backdrop, is life really worth living? I'll take my chances.